picked up the paper and I thought it would be interesting just to have a look at just read some of these stories. You can always tell from a local paper, you can tell a lot about an area. And uh, I'm going to just uh, read a couple of the stories here, which I think, is, I think it warrants it. This is the Fulham and Hammersmith Chronicle. Story on the front page. Crack house raid nets huge arsenal. It tells me a little bit about the area. Then I go on. Then I go on to this bit, Shepherd's Bush. A 27-year-old woman had her bag stolen with a thousand pounds of cash in it. <laughs> now, what, what is wrong with that story? Because <laughs> it would be a thousand pounds if you had your bag stolen. And uh, how much money was in the bag when it was stolen? Oh, uh, I think... A thousand pounds, I think. Shepherd, no one in Shepherd's Bush has ever owned a thousand pounds. This is nice. Ambulance crew deny stealing cash. What a lovely area this is. Oh, you pump his chest, I'll go through his pockets. Rotating school building, a good move. A school building will be rotated to make it easier for students and staff to move between lessons. <laughs> well, there's always a simple solution. <laughs> Firefighters attended a blaze last night when an ice cream van was deliberately set on fire by a gang of toddlers in the Peabody estate. <laughs> This is the one I'm going to take. This is my. This is the headline. I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember the error by this. Alcoholic commits arson in own flat. <laughs> you know what? More often though, it's the classifieds where you really get a sense of the beating heart of a community. This caught my eye immediately. For sale: double pine bed, includes mattress, some stains. <laughs> And the people selling their clothes in the paper, this is, how does this happen? For sale, 12 pairs of men's trousers, size 36 waist, genuine reason for selling. <laughs> what could possibly be a genuine reason for selling all your trousers? <laughs> Do you just wake up in the morning and think, you know what, I've had it with trousers, don't want them anymore. Don't want them in my life. Get the paper on the phone, put an advert in. Mention I'm genuine, tell them I'm genuine, will you? <laughs> The best one I had, I was, when I was in Reading, I've been collecting these everywhere, the, I was in Reading, and a uh, little, little thing in the back of the paper, and it said, uh, fishing reel cover fits most fishing reels, 50p, and then he put underneath, no time wasters. <laughs> I would find it difficult to waste this guy's time any more efficiently than he is doing his own, frankly. I'm time wasters. That's Hammersmith, you leave it there for five minutes. Fucking gone, look at that. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what I saw the other day, this upset me, and I'm a pretty easy going guy. You know what I saw? I saw an ambulance Big sign on the back of the ambulance, on the back door. Do you know what it said? It said, this is an ambulance, not a taxi. <laughs> this is an ambulance, not a taxi. I know, I can see, I can see, don't worry, I can tell. I know it's not a taxi. You know how I know it's not a taxi? Because last time I called a taxi, it didn't take three quarters of a fucking hour to arrive, that's how I know. <laughs> While I'm on the subject, can I just ask, is it really strictly necessary in this day and age to have the word ambulance written back to front? on the bonnet of the ambulance. Now, so if you see it in the rearview mirror, it says, I, I know why. <laughs> I know why. I'm just questioning it. See, my point is, if the blue flashing light and the big red cross <laughs> hasn't done it for you, <laughs> just a hunch, but I suspect the word ambulance is going to be lost on you as well. <laughs> know if there had ever been anyone in the history of the automobile who was driving along, looks in their rearview mirror and goes, huh, what the heck's this? <laughs> Who's this joker with his blue flashing light? And... 
big red cross behind me. Whether he's not getting past me. <laughs> what does this say? Eculumbo? What does the hell that mean? <laughs> not getting out of his way. There's some pushy Danish furniture company behind me trying to get past me. You gotta watch it. You gotta, they're all at it. I saw a fire engine, big sign on the back of the fire engine. You know what it said? It said, smoke alarms save lives. I thought, yeah, more like save you the bother of getting out of bed to put the fires out, you lazy bastards. <laughs> you gotta watch it. AA vans. We're Britain's fourth emergency service. <laughs> right, only in this country could coming forth be a boast. <laughs> You say, my God, run her up to bronze. <laughs> well, the fun of taking part, none of the hassle of hanging around for a medal! <laughs> Mountain rescue, they're grumpy bastards, aren't they? <laughs> so you help me down from a hill. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you have no right to criticise my footwear. <laughs> I was wearing flip-flops, I felt like a walk. Well, volunteer service, you see, Jack. Yeah, and don't you keep banging on about it. Listen, pal, you wanted to rescue people. I wanted rescuing. We both got what we wanted, so shut your face. <laughs> so I've been travelling around. I've been trying to learn a little fact about everywhere I go, everywhere I go in Britain. And, uh, you know, for instance, I mean, the fact I learned about Scunthorpe is I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it all the car park it's twinned with. Then I'm in Hereford. What do I find out about Hereford? This is the fact I learned about Hereford. Do you know what's based there? The SAS are based in Hereford, along with like 17 and a half thousand other guys who claim to be in the SAS. Everyone, <laughs> everyone you meet in Hereford. Oh, yes, I'm in the SAS, me. Can't say that much more about it. <laughs> is that a fact? Well, they're recruiting 24 stone lard asses now, are they? <laughs> what's your speciality? A roadblock, are you? What you did burst into the room and sit on people. <laughs> but then I met a real SAS guy in this pub in Hereford, real, only that tall, short little guy, Scottish guy, quite scary, quite weird, you know, and he's telling me how he can kill people with a box of matches and stuff, you know? What do you meant to say to that in a conversation? He went, oh, well done, good. <laughs> I never got further than candles and cigarettes myself, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then he's talking to me, and then suddenly he's got this twitch, he does this. Have you ever talked to someone and they got a twitch? Suddenly they, got, they do this, they've got a twitch. You think, oh my God. <laughs> now I've got to keep listening and ignore the twitch. <laughs> the stakes of this conversation have gone up just now. It's like trying to rub your stomach and pat your head at the same time. <laughs> he's telling me about these past missions he's been on. I say, see, I miss you, Jack. That was me and my pal, Mark. Come down on the rope and through a second floor and through a window. Tap, tap, did. Finish. Job done. <laughs> we home. I was going through a window, tap, tap, tap to heat, tap to chest. I'm through a window, Jack, down on the road, I'm through the window, second floor. Double tap, all right, I understand, you shot him, it's fine. <laughs> but then he goes, he starts warning me, never come up behind him, because he's so highly trained, he's so strung up. Never come up behind him, because he's so, his instincts are so, see my pal there, he's got a sky down his face, he come up behind me, I have a teacup in my hand, can I help myself, Jack? He come up behind me. I'm sure we'll train, can I? Just, we like to think, can I? I'll stuck it in his face for him. <laughs> yeah, come up behind me, Jack. <laughs> See my nan. <laughs> She's got a hole in her neck there. She's got up behind me, Jack. I have a pencil in my hand, doing a crossword. Can I help myself? My nan come up behind me. stuck it in her fucking neck. <laughs> Never come up behind me, Jack. Easy, guy, easy. I, let, I thought I've got to get away from this nutcase. So I leave, I thought I'd go to the next bar on, and I'm leaving this pub, and oh, this guy, as I'm coming in, this guy with a sombrero, and you know, he's selling the flowers from pub to pub, you know, this guy, flower for the lady! <laughs> flower for the, no thanks, I'm on my own. And the, I tell you what though, you see that Scottish guy by the bar? <laughs> you tap him on the shoulder, I think you'll make a sale. I feel pretty bad about it now because I, I later learned it took them three days to get all the peanuts out of his face. So. 